Everybody, Kurt here from the 410 Bridge. Uh, this is uh, the weekly COVID-19 update for the country of Haiti. Uh, everything that I'm going to share with you here is kind of the latest information that we have coming out of country. As you can imagine, it's difficult to really understand what's happening in the communities and getting information out. But let me tell you what we know. Uh, there are currently, as of today, April 7th, uh, there are 24 cases, uh, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Haiti. They've had uh, one, one death, and uh, most of the confirmed cases are still in and around uh, the Port-au-Prince area. Some of them are going out to other communities, but you got to remember that testing is not happening in Haiti like it's happening elsewhere, and so it's really difficult to tell how many people actually have it and how many people don't. But currently, they're confirming 24 cases uh, in the country. Our staff is good. Nobody on our staff has it. Um, the, the, the country still seems to be operating semi-normally. I don't know if that's a good way of saying it or not, but um, the government has come out to say that they will shut down and lock down any unaffected departments. Again, a department is like a county or a state um, <clears throat> within Haiti if, um, if, they're trying to, if they see that they can keep the virus from getting into that department. So they will have kind of threatened to lock down a department if they need to. Uh, what we're trying to do is we've been a little bit ahead of it, actually. Uh, what we're trying to do is identify the most vulnerable people we've got out in, in front of to the degree we could and with the resources that we have uh, out in front of the, the food scarcity, food shortage issue. Um, right now, there are two big priorities, as in all countries, really, that we work in. Awareness, kind of mitigation, prevention, health awareness, uh, education issues, and then, of course, the food scarcity. On the food side, we have created food kits. Uh, we have now been able to deliver the first set of food kits to 16 communities all over the country to the leaders. The leaders then have until April 15th to distribute it to the families that they've identified as the most vulnerable. Again, the most vulnerable are families that are elderly, special needs, uh, widowed or orphaned, child-led, women-led households. They've also included nursing mothers in that group of vulnerable uh, families. And so those are the ones that will be getting the food kits. The food kit will last them 30 days, uh, and it's just basic staples to get them through that time period. Maize, rice, beans, a little bit of oil, sugar, things like that. There's also going to be soap and um, uh, educational materials in, the, in each kit. Uh, as you can imagine, while wow, getting all the food from uh, the various sources and then getting it distributed to the communities and the leaders are taking on the responsibility of getting it to the families has been a tremendous strain on resources, both financial resources and uh, for our people. So we would greatly appreciate your prayers for our people, your support financially with the food kits. If you want to participate in the food kit uh, initiative, we have put a link on our, on our webpage, 410bridge.org. On the homepage is a link to our COVID-19 Global Relief Plan. All three countries, uh, Kenya, Haiti, Guatemala, are on that page. You can kind of see how many kits we're looking to distribute, what's in each kit by country. We've just averaged the cost across all countries just to make it easier. And it's currently $117 for one month's supply of basic food items, again, the soap, education, uh, materials uh, for, a, for a household. And that's usually a household of about five to six people in Haiti. So if you want to support that, we'd greatly appreciate your help. Um, we will continue to do what we need to do over time as the food scarcity issue gets worse, the health issue gets worse. We're going to want, we want to be there for our communities. So check that out. And if you could help, we'd appreciate that. Um, I'll be back every week with additional updates. Um, again, pretty fluid environment, right? So uh, next week may look very different than this week. Um, but we are talking to a bunch of other organizations in, uh, in Haiti, Christian organizations that are trying to help with the relief effort, trying to coordinate uh, different responses. And so we'll give you an update of that next week. So thanks again for all you do. Thanks for being part of the 410 family. We're grateful for that. We appreciate you continue the, the, uh, the prayers and the and notes of encouragement to our staff, especially our Haitian staff. Uh, they're working really hard in a very difficult environment. So thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week.